So like Robert was saying, um, we used to do the track pack to where it would you know, be on the back, would come to the front, and we would have a stitch. But that measurement had to be right on. Too tight was not good. You could really see the birds when they had a track back too tight and when they ate, the crop was pushed a little bit too much to the side and all that. Um, but really the danger thing was having it too loose, having it too loose, and then the straps on the front showed and um, normally would go right through the center of it. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. And, um, but there was never a, really a table of the size and the measurements and, and uh, so people had to kind of figure it out. Um, and, and, and the way I came about to doing it the way I'm doing it now, I mean, is it the, the answer to all things? I don't think so, but, but it's working out pretty good. Was because we were doing some testing on some transmitters and, um, and I didn't want to grab my bird to do it, so I was using pigeons. So I tried to use pigeons, put some track backs on some pigeons, but on the pigeon body, it did not work. It's really strange, but it did not work. It seems like the whole, let's call it the whole harness, was sliding up, up the body. So I was already 20 miles away from home, but I needed to do the test and stuff. And so I ended up grabbing the pigeon and I put it through its legs and it, and it worked. And so since then, I've been kind of doing it that way. So all I'm gonna do, so there's no, the old way, when you put the, when you put the, um, all right, let me keep track of this. When you put the track back on, let's see. You know, you had to get it so snug, but if your bird was really skinny, then you really had to know when the bird was gaining weight and if you needed to maybe replace it. So this way it allows for the bird to gain weight and uh, you still have to check it, but it, it allows the bird to gain weight and I think uh, your track pack would last longer. All right, so all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this ring off. Gotta have that. We're gonna put both. Yeah. We'll try. Okay. There's no need to just keep this one in the bag. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, all you gotta watch is, hopefully you don't end up with any twists on the Teflon. So I'm gonna put it on the back. Put it on the back, and I, the way where I like to have it. Let me see if I can twist this. Where I like to have the track back is right at the V, right there. Right at the V, right there. Now, one thing I've noticed is that on this style of putting it on. I don't know, it seems like it tends to move a little bit up. So I'm gonna start low and now I'm gonna work the feathers around. I'm gonna cross right now in the front. I'm gonna cross the track back. But right now I'm trying to get the feathers out of the way and trying to get the, the track back close to the neck. I don't want it to slide so much down because if I don't do that, it will slide down quite a bit. All right. Once we have the track pack uh, 
the Teflon strap or strand. The Teflon strand. That's okay. So once I have the Teflon strand on the plate, then we can move it around and manipulate things. Let me just get the strands back here. All right. Just get the wing and the feathers out of the way. Maybe you can twist this so that he can see it. There you go. All right. So we have one strand already. Um, plate. And then Once we get it on, we'll be able to preen some of the feathers out of the way. Now, one thing you want to make sure that your, the tips of your track back are even, you know, not off a little bit. All right, now I'm going to try, right now it's slid down, I'm going to try to uh, bring it up a little bit and then move, preen the feathers out of the way. Let me make it a little bit looser. So you don't want it sitting on any feathers, you want it underneath, I guess, the bottom. You want to work the feathers because they will work it and then all of a sudden it's really loose. So we're going to try to keep it. A um, little bit higher in the body. Sorry if I'm not saying anything because I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing. Oh, it's just a little brass brass tool. They call it the preening tool, and uh, it comes with the package. Uh, it helps you. It's really smooth. It's polished, and it helps you uh, keeping the. Uh, Getting the working the feathers out of the way and stuff. Okay, let me think about this for a second. Have it a little bit higher. All right, like right now, I think it's too far to the side. I need to bring the plate up a little bit. Hopefully I can get it.
All right, so I think a long time ago when we made one, one of the videos, I don't know if I really specified or I said enough about really what's, what's too tight and what's not tight enough, but let me make sure that the strands are exactly the same. All right, let me do something really quick. I would suggest there's going to be two brass crimping rings on your package. I would say to use both of them. One's on the, on the Teflon and the other one's in the little plastic bag. But I would suggest to use both. Because if you need another one and if you end up cutting the Teflon, when you buy a package it's going to come with another two rings. So this will give you a little bit more crimping power, so we'll use both rings. Now, putting the first, the tip through the brass rings, the first tip is easy. And what's tricky is trying to get this one now through the rings when you got this other one already in there. So the way I like to do it is I put the first one in and I'm going to bend it in half. I'm going to put the other strap inside of this one crimp it and then I'm going to slide the rings in past it so that I can grab both both tips so all we're doing right now I'm, I'm, I'm not going to cinch it or anything um, the thing is that once it's on the rings it really is not going to go anywhere second. I'll have you come over and maybe look at what I've done before it's all all done. All right so now I'm gonna do the thing where I slide, can you see that? Where I'm gonna slide both of these rings to get that other tip through. Right there. See now it's coming out. All right, so come over and, and, and take a look. You can come over and take a look before it's all crimped, how those two pieces are, you know, the two rings are there on the plate, like that. have both strapped. Now, I think right now it's going to be too loose, so I'm going to try to put, just put my pinky in and it's like even I can put my first finger in, I can put my first finger in and that's way too loose, okay? So we're going to close it down a little bit, making sure that both plates are even. I mean the straps are even. So is the ideal tightness then being able to get your pinky fairly? You know, fair? and, and not not like tight, but, yeah. but there's enough for me, for me, you know? I can pull it up a little bit and I've got room, right? I've got that room. I think that's pretty close. I would almost cinch it now. Let's give it a minute for him to I mean, we're basically done. We're just waiting for it to, for the bird to maybe preen it a little bit and uh, get some of these feathers out of the way. I'd like to see it. So you want to let the, 
maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, because if it's on the top, then later on he'll preen it, preen it, and all of a sudden your track back is going to be too loose. Okay. So get some of the feathers out of the way. So I do just want to get it close and then you let him sit for a minute, relax, kind of rouse, and then go through again. Yeah, he'll rouse, he'll preen it out, and uh, check it, make sure that it didn't move or something. But that, in the old way, it was, it was hard and it took forever and the right measurements always made you wonder if it was not too tight because you could barely get it over the hood. Anyway, but this is, seems to be working out. So where did the crossover in the front end up? The so the crossover, the crossover is about right here, right now. And then of course it went this way, this way, and then up the leg, right? It went that way. I mean, Bird doesn't seem to be fussing too much about it. Yeah, this is so much easier. We were doing it on gerfalcons and they've got so many feathers that, I mean, it was like, in, they preened it and it was like, where did it go? And now you're like really digging to try to find the plate. I think it's, see, maybe now it loosened up, where's the uh, hair? See, now I think it loosened up a little bit, right, that's, that's pretty good. I think it a little quite loose, but it's loose and this one's tighter, oh, it's about the same, I feel this one, this and that one's worked this pretty good. I think, uh, let me think about this for a second. No. All right, so the last thing I do once we crimp it, um, and we used to put epoxy, making sure that things didn't really come apart. We don't do that anymore. And if you want to put a little glue, I use super glue. But the way I do it, and remember this, I know you can buy the little bottle thing that you can squeeze that looks like uh, it's got the shape of a toothpaste, you know? You take the tip off and you just squeeze the little bottle. And I've had a few people that use that. And the second you want to put a drop, let's say that once you crimp it, and I want to raise one side up, I want to raise one side up so that it splits a little bit and I put a drop of glue right there. It will have a cap layer action and the second you touch it, it will just suck that whole tube of super glue in there. So don't do that. If you want to put a drop of glue, put a drop of glue on your brass piece and then touch it. If you think you need one more drop, put another drop on your brass piece and that's all you're going to get and then touch it then you won't get in trouble. Otherwise, it will be smoking and it will be stiff feathers and it'll be an ugly scene. So, don't do it. Just use the brass piece and put it on. I think I'm gonna just close it up a little bit more. Just very little. We'll cut it. And then another thing that I've been using is so that it doesn't fray. I'll cut it on an angle. If you cut it straight, the way it's made, it's gonna fray, and uh, you don't wanna have any of those strands loose. So I cut it on an angle, and I've got this little glue, and I'll show you what it is. But you can put the super glue. I just don't have super glue right now, and I've got that. So that's what I'm gonna use, but. What, uh, what do you recommend for uh, uh, design in the first year, after the first per, year? Per me, per me. What do you recommend to put the, the pack on? Is it after the first year, after they got No, the just whenever year? you, you know, if you're ready to work with your bird, put it on. You know? It's all right. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, we're almost done. We don't need to make this any any longer. Just need to make those brass pieces the same. All right. I think we're good. Okay, the, your pliers. I'm not gonna pinch it. I'm just gonna. All I'm gonna do is get these rings straightened out. All right, now they're lined up. See, this is like the, okay, am I, is it good, is it too tight, is it too loose? I think it's okay. Looks good. You wanna, sure. does it make you nervous? Oh, that's actually, that's about good. I mean, here, of course, we can pull yeah, it up, pull it you know, but, but it's, that looks good. I want to watch it grow, but... I just need to get them straight. Cut it. So, Fabri Fuse, I guess, when you cut fabric, so it doesn't come undone, you can touch this up. And it dries up fairly quick. And all I want is for it to not fray. Hopefully the bird doesn't move for a minute and it will be dry enough. You can come over and look at it before it dis disappears under the feathers. 